on subsistence economy. It links us to our land. It is our source of economic empowerment. It is our social connectedness and relationship. It is our source of peacemaking and friendship. It is our area of expertise, skills, and knowledge. It is manageable, it is available, it is accessible, it is cheap, it is fresh, it is organic. It is also a major economic base in Solomon Islands. And so women in particular play a major role in subsistence food production. In fact, women have a greater power and influence over food production compared to men. Women have a commanding position in the subsistence economy, and they tell men what to do. And so men play a supportive role uh, in the case of food production. And let me tell you a story about a man who don't know where his wife's garden is. His wife was really sick, and so he, he was taking the responsibility to go to the garden and harvest food for the family. So anyhow, he went, and he don't know where his wife's garden is, and he went past the garden, and he heard some women in their garden laughing and telling stories. He called out to them and said, do you know where my wife's garden is? And the women said, who are you? And he said, I am John, not his, not his real name. And the women laughed at him and said, if you gone past your wife's garden, go back, turn right, and when you come to this spot, that's your wife's garden. And so that's see how women play a major role in subsistence uh, garden compared to men. Yet the whole issue of subsistence food production is challenged with many issues. First, the population growth at 2.8%. Currently, we are getting ready to, to conduct our national census, and the population is now around half a million. Natural disasters that come our way on yearly basis. We've just had rainy season and floods where we lost 10 lives. There is high-rise sea level, cyclones and tsunamis, earthquakes, development and environmental degradation, especially in the area of logging. There is land shortage, a poor infrastructure and, and geographical is isolation. We just had the civil conflict. A shift from the subsistence to the cash economy now with the younger generation. There is that urban migration. And there is the government policies versus reality and the current economic crisis that is hitting the world. And this is an island that is really affected by the high-rise sea level. This is just a picture of the recent flood we had. The damage that was done to this road and the bridge was caused by the logging that has been happening at the top of this area. Uh, this is also a aerial view of a village that has gone through the flood that just hit some, uh, West Kodolkana recently. This is a picture of a logging in Makira province. And another picture of the logging that's taking place on Makira province. And this is the community's water source that's been affected by logging. And yes, this is another community water source that has been really badly damaged by logging. Yes, Solomon Islands government has developed its policy for food production, food security. And uh, as you can see on the board, it, it's, it's really well written and formulated. And one of the expected outcomes that relates to the whole issue of food production is the food security and food production to prevent hunger and malnutrition. Yet when I rang the Minister of Agriculture just before I came, I was informed that there is no budget for subsistence food production. Instead, they've encouraged rural farmers to continue with planting food. So while the policy looks good, there is no tangible program that supports this policy. So despite of that, there is still hope for us. 
One is that we have the skills and knowledge and expertise in food production in the subsistence economy. Two, we have the land and dependent on the land. Third, in the case of justice and fairness, from the subsistence agriculture perspective, every family has more than one garden. And so recommendation to help improve the food production, the subsistence food production sector is one, give every woman an ax, a bush knife, a hoe, a mattock, and you give them and their family their right to life. Third, to create rural-based marketing facilities and rural economic empowerment initiatives. And thirdly, to protect our natural resources and environment. So justice and fairness. Think again about the one just single carbon highlight story. Are we being fair to the highlights and to each other? What does one just world mean to us in our context? In conclusion, for me, food is not a question of affordability, but a right to life. Thank you very much.